In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for His infinite love, mercy, and kindness, allowing us to be in His holy house, and His holy church, sharing His um, living and life-giving Word, the only true Word of the true divine God, the Holy Gospel, the Scriptures of both Old and New Testament, as a testimony of the true living God, the Creator of everything that is visible and invisible. I pray those who are with us in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming that you're always in good health and in good spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 112. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. He has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted with honor. The wicked will see it and be grieved. He will gnash his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, a very good evening to everyone. How are we? Oh. How are we? Oh, big improvement, a big improvement. Um, I thank the Lord Jesus. I pray that you guys are always in good health and in good spirit and always good because our God is good and we need to be good in Him. Amen? Very good. And there goes the chair. Um, so what are we doing? Yes, we are continuing the Gospel of St. Matthew, but before we do that, we're going to ask our beloved choir, Eddie and Michelle, to begin this evening with a church hymn. Please. Amen to that. So, <clears throat> how are things? Okay. Are we good? I think you shouted earlier, so you're not going to shout again. Are we good? Yes. That's the way. Okay, today we're continuing our... Um, journey with this um, chapter 5 according to the Gospel of St. Matthew. Today we'll be reading from verses 6, um, uh, 7 to 9. We'll be reading from verses 7 to 9. So it's Matthew chapter 5, verses 7 to 9. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God, and all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. In the last um, couple of weeks, we said that chapter 5, 6, and 7 is 
the Mount of Beatitudes, where the Lord Jesus for the first time comes addressing the public. It is what we refer to as the royal speech or the second Mount Sinai, where the Lord God in the Old Testament gave the commandments to Moses. It is likened unto Mount Sinai of the New Testament, and that is the Mount of the Beatitudes, which takes up three chapters of the Gospel of Matthew 5, 6, and 7. We're talking about the blessings. In chapter 5, there are nine blessings, and these nine blessings, we said, they are like a curriculum in the uh, educational system. Wherever there is a king, there is a kingdom, and wherever there is a kingdom, there is the way to live in that kingdom. There is a law. There is, there is a curriculum. You need to learn on how to live in this kingdom. It's like teacher, school, and then the subject being taught in the school. So that subject being taught in the school are these blessings, which is the kingdom of heaven. These blessings are to do with the kingdom of heaven. So far, we've covered nine blessings. It begins with verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we said we need to come to the Lord Jesus being poor, i.e. empty. We need to come empty to the Lord Jesus in order for Him to fill us up. I cannot come to the Lord and say, I've done this for you and I've done that for you. And I am the best of the best. You will never find anyone better than me. No, you come as a full sinner, a complete sinner, coming to Him, say, Lord, I'm blind, you open my eyes. Lord, I'm empty, you fill me up. I am nothing and you're everything. I'm coming, seeking you wholeheartedly, not partially, not whenever I want to. I need you always, good times, bad times, all the times. When we come poor, Confessing our sins, the Lord will take away those sins and He will fill us up. We come empty, He will fill us up with His Holy Spirit. We spoke about this. I'm just touching base. When He fills us up with His Holy Spirit, that is the enlightenment. We will be enlightened by the power of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit enlightens us, we then and then only will realize how sinful we are. We will do the second blessing. We will mourn. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I will mourn. I will shed tears from the heart for every time I sinned and broke in the heart of my sweetheart, Jesus Christ. I will cry and mourn over my sins, which I have offended the Almighty God by doing so. When I mourn, I'll be comforted. And the Lord said it, I'll send you the Holy Spirit, the comforter from my Father in my name. So the Holy Spirit will comfort us when we cry, confessing and uh, admitting to our mistakes and taking full ownership of our wrongdoings. He will comfort us. Then the third blessing, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We said meekness here is to do with depositing the most valuable thing I have in the safest place ever to exist. And the most expensive thing I have is my spirit. I came now to deposit it in the safest place, which is the hand of my heavenly Father. And my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says, I and the Father are one. When we put our spirit in the hand of the Lord, no one can take us away from the Lord. This is the meek soul. When we entrust the Lord, in other words, with everything we have, something will live in me, and that is being hungry and thirsty for righteousness. And righteousness is every deed which pleases God. And in fact, Christ is our righteousness. We will imitate Jesus Christ on earth. We will love everything God loves. 
and we will in, in endeavor to do everything that pleases the Lord. Before I did everything against him, now by his grace, I'm trying to do everything that pleases him and puts a huge smile on his face. I am hungry and thirsty to do all the work which God expects of me to do and anticipates of me to do. When we become hungry and thirsty for righteousness, meaning doing the deed of God, the work of God on earth, what will happen? The subject of today, blessed are the merciful for they shall have or for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Why after being hungry and thirsty for righteousness, i.e. God's work, why do I need to be merciful? Why do I need to be merciful? Because when you begin doing the work of God, you will encounter people in your life. And those people are not going to be all angels and saints. Those people that are going to come your way, they will be a pain in your life. So what is required of me is to obtain mercy. Why? Because my beloveds, when I come to do the work of God and I see somebody trying to hinder this work, Without mercy, I will wipe them from the face of this earth. I will chop their head off and I will pluck them from their roots. But when that mercy is embedded in me, when the Lord has filled me up with his mercy, I will be compassionate toward those who are misunderstanding me. Because the Lord thus far has taught me that I was one of them. I was the disobedient, I was that prodigal son, I did the same if not more and worse than them. Christ used to call me to him, I used to go to Satan. The Lord said, come to church, I went to the club. The Lord Jesus said, praise me, I swore. The Lord Jesus said, speak the truth, I spoke the lie. The Lord Jesus said, come to the light, I went to the darkness. I was one of those people whom I am encountering now in my life. But this time the Lord opened my eyes when I see people are still living in darkness, distant from God. I need to be merciful toward them, not judgmental. Not judgmental because I was one of them before. All glory to the Lord Jesus. He touched my heart and opened my eyes but I should remember one thing. I am no better than anyone else. Yes. Please be very careful. Don't ever say, I'm faithful. She's not. Don't ever say, I am the child of God. She is the, the daughter of the snake. Don't ever say that. Don't ever say that. The Lord Jesus died on the cross in the flesh and with his precious blood purchased everyone. Those who believed in him and those who did not believe in him. He purchased everyone. He paid the price for everyone's debt. It's up to people now to accept this sacrifice that was offered on Calvary on the cross. So all of us are sinners. That therefore, all of us are the same. I'm no better than anyone else. I need to be merciful now. Because the Lord taught me. How many times I broke his heart, yet he forgave me. How many times I walked away from him, yet he never denied me. How many times I sold him with 30 pieces of silver, yet he purchased me with his own precious blood. Then what am I supposed to do for others, which I was one of them? I need to be compassionate and merciful toward them, no matter how much they go against me and give me a hard time. Just like they offend me, I offended God. Just like they went against me, I went against God. Do you want God to be fair with you? Forgive those 
who are against you the way God forgives you when you go against him. It's only fair. It's only fair. Mercy. One day the Lord was walking. And the disciples approached him and they said, the 12 apostles, they said, Lord, teach us on how to pray. They've been with him for a little while. He hasn't taught them how to pray. You'll find the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, 9 and Luke 11, 3. In Matthew 6, 9 and Luke 11, 3, the Lord Jesus taught them the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. This is the most commonly prayed prayer throughout Christendom. When you look at the Lord's Prayer, it, is, it consists of seven statements. It consists of seven statements. The first three statements, the first three statements to do with God. The second part, the last four statements to do with humanity. The first one, it's not our, our topic, but touching base on it. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. That's one. Your kingdom come, your will be done. These three are to do with God. Give us today our daily bread. Now it begins with humanity's affairs. Humanity one to another. The Lord, after teaching the apostles this prayer, which consists of seven statements, he comes back and elaborates on one statement only and leaves the other six aside. Which one did the Lord make an emphasis on? It is this. If you forgive other people's mistakes, your heavenly Father will forgive you your mistakes. But if you do not forgive other people's mistakes, neither your heavenly Father will forgive you your mistakes. Wow. But hang on a second, Lord. Which one is the most important? You left all the other six. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. You didn't elaborate on all of that. This is to do with God. He said, no. You only elaborated on forgiveness. Why, Lord? Because the Lord Jesus says, what saved you, my beloved children, was mercy. What saved you, my beloved children, was mercy. And just a touch of reverb. What saved you was the mercy of God. And what is the sign of mercy? Forgiveness. What is the sign of mercy? Forgiveness. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. When we read in Luke 23, 34, Luke 23, 34, the Lord Jesus is hanging on the cross. The Lord Jesus, while hanging on the cross, he says seven statements. And these seven statements, they go hand in hand with the seven days of creation, Genesis chapter 1. The very first statement ever that was uttered from the mouth of the Lord Jesus while hanging on the cross, the very first one, he says, you read it in Luke 23, 34, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they do. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Wow. The first thing that was uttered from the mouth of the Lord while hanging on the cross was forgiveness. And forgiveness is the sign of mercy. The Lord Jesus says, When you offend me, I, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and you come back to me, begging me for mercy, asking me to forgive you, yet I do. Shouldn't you do the same with others who offend you? 
How come when others offend you, you don't want to forgive them, yet you expect me, I, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to forgive you when you offend me? It's not fair. If you want the Lord to forgive you, you need to forgive those who are hurting you as well. Secondly, if you want to live in peace, if you want to live in peace, forgive. If you are lacking inner peace, if you are lacking that kind of a serenity in your life, maybe you haven't forgiven someone in your life as yet. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you are assuming that you have forgiven them, but deep down you haven't let go. You know when you will realize you've let go of the one who hurt you the most? When you see them in front of your eyes and you're absolutely calm and collected as if nothing has happened ever. If you don't lose it, if you don't get upset, if you don't get offended, if you see them and you smile and you want to go and hug them and say hello to them and say God bless you. If you're not able to do that, you still haven't forgiven. And if you don't forgive, you will never find peace. This is God's word. Don't argue. If you wish to live in peace, forgive the one who has been a thorn in your life. Forgive. Forgive. Forgive, my beloved. Blessed are the merciful. Before, when someone said a nasty word to me, I would go home and cry about it, really get broken and shattered. Why did they say this? Why did they do that? I can't believe it. Oh, I'm dead. I'm finished. This is one way of expressing my pain. Maybe another person will express it. I will. I will mince them. <laughs> I will chop them to pieces. How dare they talk to me this way? I'll never forgive them till the day I go to the grave. I will never, ever say hello to them, nor forgive them. They can go to hell as far as I'm concerned. Relax. <laughs> you are still living in the flesh. You are still living in the world for the world. You haven't realized who Jesus Christ of Nazareth is yet. The Lord hasn't truly touched you deep down because you haven't allowed him to do so. He wants, but it is up to us if we let him come into our life. But when the Lord touches my heart and I realize how awesome, how loving, how merciful, how humble he is, how perfect he is. When I come to this realization and the Lord now has engulfed my heart, my entire life, everything else outside of Christ is nothing. So what this person told me off, hallelujah. He embarrassed me in front of everyone. God bless you, brother. He swore at me in front of everyone. I'll make you tabula next time. <laughs> Why? When you realize the Lord Jesus, nothing else matters. People love me. People hate me. For me, it's the same. People honor me, people disrespect me. For me, it's the same. You know why? Because I'm no longer here for the people. I am for this sweetheart only. My entire existence on earth is for the Lord, not for people. He comes first and last, then everyone else and everything else. And when I put Jesus Christ as number one in my life, then whoever comes later, it is all good. It is all beautiful. Doesn't matter. You love me? God bless you. You hate me? God bless you. 
You accept me? God bless you. You reject me? God bless you. Because I pray the way the Lord touched my heart, I pray He does the same for you. Because until the Lord touches your heart, you will never understand what I am feeling, what I am living, what I am going through. It takes God to change someone's heart. It takes God. It takes God, my beloved. It takes God. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Do you want God to come and reward you? Or do you want people to reward you? Which one? If you're seeking people's reward, forget about the Lord. Then do whatever pleases people and let people love you. But if you are here seeking the Lord's reward, then you need to do what pleases the Lord, even if that means it offends people. Are you willing to go the distance for the Lord? Or is it, or is your love hanging on this condition? Lord, I love you as long as people are nice to me. The moment people go against me, I'll say to you, Lord, time out. This, this is not my cup of tea. This is not my path. This is not for me, Lord Jesus. Please, I've had enough. No. No one replaces the Lord. No one comes anywhere near the beauty of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I can afford to lose everyone, but I can never afford to lose the love of my life. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I cannot. So be merciful. Because when you show mercy to others who have offended you, you are imitating your Lord Jesus on earth. You are becoming Christ-like on earth when you say to them, I forgive you. In the name of the Lord, I forgive you. You're imitating the Lord Jesus. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And they will obtain this mercy from God Himself, no one else. From God Himself, no one else. When we are filled by the mercy of the Lord Jesus, What's going to happen after that? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. This is number six. This blessing is number six. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Just a touch of reverb, please. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. When you look at a palm tree, when you read in Psalm number one, King David, he said, let me, let me take it out, get it out for you. Psalm number one, I will read it so you'll understand which tree King David is talking about in Psalm number one. You know, sometimes these technologies, they come handy. Psalm number one. Psalm number one, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but he delights in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He's talking about the Holy Bible here, the law. He shall be like a tree. See, verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Which tree is King David talking about here that is planted by the rivers of water? The palm tree. In this psalm, King David is referring to the palm tree, my beloved. Why the palm tree? Because the palm tree normally gets planted right by that stream or that uh, river of water.
because the palm tree requires a lot of water in order to shoot up and then reach maturity. What happens to the palm tree as it's growing, as it's shooting up? There is a lot of branches. There is a lot of branches that come out of that trunk. As it's growing, what do they do to those branches? They cut them off. Why? Because the more the branches, the more the water is needed, the slower the growth is. When you get rid of those branches, the growth is now faster to reach in reaching maturity. So as the tree is growing, all these branches are cut off. If this palm tree had a mouth and a tongue, would have screamed on top of its voice and said, please, whatever you do, just stop cutting in me. It's extremely painful. You are killing me. You are hurting me. You are destroying me. Stop hurting me. Stop cutting me. But it doesn't have a mouth to scream and yell. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall be called the sons of God. How do we obtain this pure heart? By being chopped left, right, and center, like the palm tree. By being chopped left, right, and center, like a palm tree. There is... Um, There is a verse in this book of Psalms, the righteous is like the palm tree. The righteous is like the palm tree. We have this writing on the altar of Saint Shimon Bar Sabai, who is the patron saint of this church. When a Christian comes and says, why is God doing this to me? Doesn't he, can't he find someone else? Why is he just picking on me? Am I the only one here? I go to church. I pray. I try my hardest to be a good Christian. Yet, I'm copying it left, right, and center. The more I go to church, the more I'm in pain. The more I'm praying, the more I'm struggling. The more I'm doing the right thing, the more everything is going wrong. And I look at the people who are totally distant from the Lord. Yet, the Lord has blessed them abundantly. Look at them. They live luxuriously. They live like kings. And look at me, the so-called faithful. Not even a street beggar. Not even. I'm below that level. Lord, why? Why don't you go and strike those who are distant from you? Why are you picking on me? Why am I suffering? I finish from one obstacle, I encounter a bigger one. I go into one ditch, I come out of it. By force, I fall into a bigger one. This person used to love me and now they are my worst nightmare. What's going on, Lord? The Lord says, blessed are those who endure till the end for they shall live. Blessed are those who will last till the end for they shall be glorified. Blessed are you if you allow God to come and cut you left, right, and center, because by cutting you, He is purifying your heart. By cutting you, He is purifying your heart. All the obstacles I encountered in my life, all those dark tunnels that I had to go through, all the heavy burdens that I carried, and every problem that I encountered in my life, which I complained about, I whinged to God and I said, enough, find something.
It is whiter than snow. It is whiter than snow. That heart of the tree to become this white, it took a lot of cutting, a lot of crying, a lot of bleeding, a lot of pain and sorrows along the way. But that tree remained planted by the river of waters, by that stream of water. It is planted right beside that stream of water. And that river of water is the Lord Jesus. I am the living water woman. He who drinks from this water shall never thirst again. The water is Christ. Unless I am planted beside the Lord Jesus, I cannot withstand the pains and the sorrows I go through. I cannot withstand the, the weight of the cross which I must carry every day and follow the Lord Jesus. Chopping me is carrying the cross, but in order to remain faithful, carrying the cross till the very end, I need to remain beside the running waters, the living waters, which is Christ Jesus himself. Trust him. Be planted right beside him. Hold on to him and say, Lord, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Leave me always planted beside you. Don't ever let me go away from you. Don't ever let these heavy burdens drift me away from you. Don't let the temptations of the world take me away from you. Let me be that palm tree planted always beside you to draw from the living waters which is you, my Lord. You are my living water. But when the Lord is allowing trials coming my way, it is for my benefit. He is not, he is not harsh. The Lord is never harsh. He loves us more than himself. More than himself. But he wants us to have a pure heart at the end. Did you know the most expensive pearl, the most expensive pearl is, is actually made through a wound of a sea creature, of a sea creature. These creatures, they live deep down in the oceans. When they fight against each other, they wound one another when they are wounded through this fight a substance comes out of that wound and because of the salty water of the ocean it gathers around this substance and after a little while before you know it that wound which produced that substance with the salty water gave the most expensive pearl ever to exist on the face of this earth and pearls are white. The most expensive pearl comes from a wound. And the most expensive pearl the Lord gave came out of his wound, the church. Out of the wound of Christ, the church was born. The most expensive pearl ever to exist on the face of this earth. The Lord says, I endured all suffering, all whipping and lashing and piercing. Nails went through my hands and my feet. The crown of thorns placed on my head. I was wounded for you. Will you accept being wounded for my sake? If you truly love me. Love is a two-way street. I loved you so much, I accepted to be wounded for your sake. Will you accept to be wounded for my sake? Or are you going to walk away the first time you are wounded by Satan and the world? Are you going to walk away and run away from your master, from your Jesus, the one who died for you, the one who was wounded on the cross for your sake? Are you going to deny him? 
or are you going to stand firm and say Lord with you till the end I'm with you Lord till the end by your grace when through woundings my heart is being purified and made whiter than snow what will happen I will see God what does the word see God here mean it's not like you will see God in the literal sense because no one can see God and live God is spirit and God is infinite no one can see God the only way to God is the face of Jesus Christ of Nazareth when you see this perfect man's face you are seeing the face of God this is the only way on earth and in heaven forevermore otherwise God in his nature as spirit no one can see him you cannot go to the, uh, the kingdom of God and see God the Father sitting here, God the Son sitting over there, and God the Holy Spirit. No such thing. They are all one God and they are all spirit and they are infinite. Who are you going to see as the face of God? Jesus. And he said it to his disciples. Truly I say to you, he who sees me sees the Father. When you look at the face of this perfect man, this is the only way to seeing the face of God for he is the face of God but what does it mean blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God I'll give you this example what this verse means if I come to you and say let's go and um, watch these socceroos play soccer hmm? soccer players I'll say to you look at this soccer player and you look and then I'll say do you see him when you look at the soccer player you will say yeah he's quite tall fair skin blonde not bad but if I say do you see him what does seeing here mean do you know how this soccer player plays his tactics how does he run how does he pass the ball his tactics do you know how he functions seeing means do you know how he operates do you know how he plays no I just looked and I saw a soccer player but I don't know how he works seeing God meaning when God gives you a pure heart you will know how God works you're not gonna see him with your naked eye but you will know how he operates next time something happens you'll say oh no no this is God for sure it's not Satan prior to that you'll come and say father something happened in my life I don't know if it's from God or if it's from Satan or it's just my head playing a trick on me why because you don't have a pure heart as yet you don't know but the moment God gives me that pure heart I'll know if it's God or not because I got used to him because to obtain a pure heart it takes a life's journey my beloved you cannot be so close to the Lord just overnight doesn't work it's a life journey it's a life journey because the Lord will test you the Lord will test you if somebody comes and says just call the Lord and that's it you're saved that's it you, you know the Lord Man, this is childish the Lord will test you all your life for you to learn one thing are you faithful or not are you going to last when things go wrong are you going to remain faithful when everything goes against you the Lord will test you it's a life journey to get to know Jesus Christ to get to see the Lord Jesus ie to get to learn how he operates how he works how he functions when you are familiar with someone so much you've lived with this person for 20 30 40 50 years of your life maybe more when you have lived with this person for so long by looking at their face you know exactly what they want 
Even if you don't see them by hearing their footsteps, you know it's them, it's no one else's because you got used to the way they walk. You got used to the way they look. You got used to the way they give signs and signals to say, yes, it's good time to ask a question. No, don't go anywhere near him. Because if you ask him now, he will explode like a volcano. You will become so familiar. You will see them, i.e. you will know exactly what's inside of them. That's seeing God. You'll become familiar with the Lord Jesus. Next time somebody comes in and says, where is God? There is no God. That's a laughable matter. <laughs> poor professor. Poor professor. They thought by studying and learning and educating themselves, they thought by learning whatever they studied at university, now I can tell if there is God or not. You are speaking foolishly. Studying gets you nowhere. You need to live with the Lord in order to see the Lord. You need to live with Him, not study about Him. So many theologians, so many scholars, so many educated people who have received doctorates in theology, but they are total strangers to the Lord Jesus. Why? All they did, they just studied, but they never lived with the Lord. Never lived. They're total strangers. They don't know the Lord Jesus. All they know is what this verse means, and they just try and explain it to the best of their ability. But who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth? I have no idea. Speaking about the Lord, it's easy. Living with the Lord, <laughs> very hard. So for someone to come and say, I just called Jesus, he came into my life, I'm saved now. I get a life. My dear, my dear, my dear, I beg of you. It takes a life's journey, a life's journey to get to even if you are fortunate enough, a glimpse, a drop from the divine ocean, not even a drop. But that drop is more than enough to carry you to the heaven of all heavens. It's more than enough. It takes a life journey. That's why sometimes the best answer to such people is keeping your silence. Because if I see the person in front of me is like a baby in a nappy, what is there to say and explain? The baby will never understand. In fact, if I try to explain what I know about the Lord to that baby, the baby will just go. <laughs> Don't they do that? When you become serious, like you engage in a, in, a, in, a, in a mature dialect with a little baby, and you are now serious, let me tell you, baby, you must understand what I'm saying. You're wasting your breath. You're wasting your time. The baby will do whatever. So what do you do? You keep silent. You put a smile on your face. And you say, one day you will learn and understand what I was trying to tell you and teach you. One day. Those fathers of the church who lived all their life in the deserts, in the crevices of the mountains, in the depth of the desert, gave up on everything that is worldly, gave up on, theirs, on themselves. Do you think, do you think you know more than them? I just wonder. I just wonder. My dear, you're a baby in a nappy. You're talking about people who are pillars in the church. 
who have reached levels in spirituality beyond your imagination. Beyond. What do we know about the Lord? My goodness. I just wonder. What do we know about the Lord Jesus? To have a pure heart, it takes a lot of cutting, a lot of fixing, a lot of chiseling off. It takes a lot. What have we endured? What have we learned so far? Wow. St. Paul puts me to shame. St. Paul, my beloved, the Lord Jesus took him to the third heaven, paradise. He did not mention his name out of humility. He says, I know of this man. He's talking about himself, by the way. He says, I know of this man who was taken up to the third heaven, paradise, whether in the flesh or in the spirit, I do not know. Meaning he was alert of the surroundings. The Lord just picked him up and took him to the third heaven, paradise. After going, seeing paradise, what eye has not seen before, what an ear has not heard of before, of the glory that is, is, get, that is prepared for those who love the Lord Jesus. St. Paul saw all the glory. St. Paul for 14 years preached the gospel. St. Paul, a shadow of his, used to cast out demons from people. A hand, handkerchief with a very foul smell in it coming out of the dimple in his foot healed people all sort of healings the lord used him in a mightily way after 14 years living with the lord saint paul comes back and says i look and i see myself i haven't even stepped one step in the path or in the way of the lord i haven't even started the closer I got to the Lord, the more I did not know Him. He is God. He is God. So next time when you talk about the Lord, relax. He's not your cousin. He's not your next door neighbor. He's not an employee in your own business. This is God. So don't be too comfortable that you know exactly every time Jesus speaks. Relax. You don't. You don't. You don't. <sighs> Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. When you lived with Christ, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years of your life, you get to sort of know, oh yeah, that's his voice. This is from him. You know why? Because only the Lord will reveal this to you. And the Lord will reveal it when you are faithful to him. Faithful. When you choose to live for Him, He will reveal. But you need to stay humble. You need to remain humble, my beloved. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall be called the sons of God. I came as poor in the spirit at the very beginning, empty, a sinner, son of the snake, living in the world, swimming in the filth of the pig's field of this world, totally distant from the Lord. He touched my heart. I came with my filth. I said, Lord, where do I start? I'm empty. I'm blind. I'm nothing. The Lord filled me up with his Holy Spirit. When he filled me, he showed me all my mistakes. I started mourning. When I started crying on my sins, he comforted me by the power of the Holy Spirit. When he comforted me, I said, there is no one that loves me more than him. Therefore, I will entrust him with the most valuable thing I have, which is my spirit. In your hand, my Lord, I commend my spirit. 
I have deposited my spirit in your hand because no one can snatch me away from you. When I put everything that I have in the Lord's hands, the Lord made me hungry and thirsty for him. I wanted to go out and engulf the whole world for him. I wanted to embrace every single human being and say to them, come and taste Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for I have tasted him by his grace. There is never going to be anyone like him. Please just come and share what the Lord has shared with me. Experience what I have experienced with the Lord. Please just come and have an encounter like I have. I want everyone to know the Lord. I'm hungry and thirsty to bring the whole world to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When you start doing this, this will put in you mercy. Because you'll feel sorry for everyone who has gone against God. You'll feel sorry for them. You're not going to judge them. You are not going to go against them. You're not going to retaliate. In fact, no. The more they come hard, the more you go soft at them. Because what the Lord has made you taste so, thus far, man, no matter how harsh people are, the Lord taught me always to be merciful. Because the day I tasted the Lord, everything else became beside the point. Everything else. Everything else. That's why, as a bishop, they place me on the throne, they put me on the ground, they throw me in the street. Is the crown of my glory. It matters not. Who cares I have a throne? Who cares I sit at the gara? Who cares I am wanted or rejected? I am loved or hated? Who cares? It's all good. It's all good. I have a home, I don't have a home, I live in the street, I live in a cave, I live wherever I live. Who cares as long as I am in the Lord, with the Lord and for the Lord. That's what matters. That's what matters. Every Christian needs to come to this realization. You are here for the Lord Jesus, not for you, not for anyone else. Don't ever put anyone before the Lord. Don't. You're here for the Lord, then for yourself and your family. But Jesus comes first. My son, when you find a girl, you better find a girl that loves the Lord Jesus, not love you. Because today she loves you, tomorrow she will go against you if she doesn't have Christ in her heart. You better find a person that has the fear of the Lord, loves the Lord Jesus from the heart, then you will have no worries. Don't seek the external appearance more than the internal appearance. Yes, doesn't, uh, it's okay to be quite beautiful, but more so inside, not outside. What's the point? She is the most beautiful girl in the world and from inside has no God in her heart. She'll do you no favor. Show mercy. And the more you show mercy toward others, the more your heart is being purified. Wow. Because when you imitate the Lord Jesus, what goes around comes around. The more you imitate the Lord, the more your heart is now being purified. And when your heart is purified, the more you're going to see God. I.e., you'll get to learn how God operates. This hidden God, this obscure God, became now vividly clear before my eyes. I got to know how he functions. And I got to learn what he expects from me to do for him. When I'm pure in the heart, I saw God. And when I saw God, the last one is, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. 
peacemakers. I came to know how God operates. So what does God expect from me now once I learned what he, what, how he functions, what he does and what he wants? What does God want? One thing. He wants peace. He wants peace. The next thing you're going to do after seeing God, after learning how God operates, you're going to go and start making peace in this world that is peaceless. That is peaceless. Blessed are the peacemakers. Notice here, the Lord is saying, blessed are those who make that peace. Peace makers. What do you make? Where do you make things in the factory? When you make things, what does the word making mean here? Creating. When you create something, what does that mean? That thing was not available, was not in existence. I brought it into existence. It wasn't there before. I made it. That means it was absent, non-existent. I created it. I made it. The Lord says, blessed are the peacemakers. Why? Because in the world, there is never peace. Never has been, never will be. Why? Because the world is placed in the bosom of Satan. Satan will never give you peace. You chase the world, you will never find peace in your life, period. When someone comes, my son, I ask you, why do you go to the club? I will say, Father, I work six days a week very hard. 12 hour shift every day, long hours. Just, I have one day off. I just want to go to the club. I mind my own business. I sit there. I drink a little bit, not too much. Maybe one schooner, one, one glass of wine. I don't play pokies. I have some lunch, some dinner with my friends, with my family, and then I go back home. But I went to the club to relax, to cool down, to just lay back a bit because it's been a long week. Wow. Wow. So you find your peace in the club? You find your comfort in the club, the house of Satan? In the Lebanese accent, Habib Al Bishuhai. You're going to Satan to find peace? Hello? Anybody home? Why don't you say, my son, I've been working six days very hard. On the seventh day, I went to the house of the Lord to cool down, to relax, to be revitalized, rejuvenated. I want to be revived, recharged once again. Why don't you go to the church and relax and have something to eat with your family called the body and the blood of Christ? who gives you the sustainability to carry on for the rest of your life. Is it wrong to relax in the house of the Lord instead of the club? Why don't you come to the Lord? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Wow. In the world there is no peace. The funniest thing you will ever hear from the people of the world when they say, we are working frantically to make peace. <laughs> the United Nations, the UN is working so hard to make peace possible. Be gone, Satan. <laughs> this is the biggest lie you could ever hear in your life. People of the world are trying to make peace possible. Wow. Outside of God, the true living God, who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you're trying to make peace, you're sons of the snake. You're liars. 
in the name of peace they've killed innocent children father and mother elderly destroyed life families in the name of peace I don't care what people say what is happening in Israel currently as we speak what peace what peace this group blames the other and the other blames the other never-ending story and in the meanwhile innocent people are being killed destroyed vanishing from the face of this earth in the name of this is my homeland no this is my homeland this is my territory no this is my territory away with you because they're trying to do it their way away from God until we receive the true divine God in our hearts who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth and Jesus Christ has got nothing to do with Christians with anyone else Jesus Christ is God for God's sake he is not Orthodox he is not Catholic definitely not Protestant he is none of you he is God the creator of everyone and everything visible and invisible until we come and have this true divine God Jesus Christ of Nazareth in our hearts we will never ever find peace period never when I see a little Palestinian child crying wounded have lost the entire family I don't care what you say this is a little baby how dare you take a life that God gave it's not yours there will never be peace in the world because Christ is not in it they don't want Christ to be in it he's everywhere but they don't want him to be in it that's why they're acting like little kids yet they are adults in stature so therefore this is what you call a fool when someone who is mature acting like a little kid that is an ignorant foolish human being this land is ours <laughs> when you have Jesus Christ in your heart no land is yours it is either this either the whole land is yours and at the same time all of it is not yours all of it is mine and all of it is not why because when I have Christ the whole world is mine because the Lord has purchased it with his own blood my sweetheart owns everything it's all mine but since my sweetheart said the son of man has no place to lay his head on therefore since I'm walking in his footprints thus I have no place in this world to lay my head on I don't want it I want Jesus I don't want this world fighting over land territory houses materialistic things money wealth fame all this nonsense nonsense at the end this land that we're fighting all over is going to be my grave that's what the land is my grave it will swallow me one day if whether I like it or not so the land we're fighting over over the over that land over it it's the grave that's all it is so Israel is a grave Palestine is a grave Australia is a grave America is a grave Canada is a grave Europe is a grave Asia is a grave Middle East is a grave so you want to fight over your grave <laughs> go for it that's foolishness foolishness you want to take the land <laughs> have it you want to take the throne you're fighting over the throne you want to take away from this bishop 
please, man, I'll help you. I'll help you carry it. I'll make you a better one from China, very cheap. <laughs> what are you fighting for? This is my church. This is my land. This is my throne. This is my flock. None of it is yours. It's the Lord's. Why are you afraid? Oh, you're afraid that your position may be shaken and your throne may be shaken. That's why you're fighting. So it's not about the Lord. It's about your throne. The people that, that, are, that belong to this church, if they want to go to another church, fine, please, go ahead. <laughs> go to another church. Because I've entrusted you in the hands of the, the Good Shepherd. Whatever the Lord has given me, I'll give you. But I've entrusted you in His holy hands. He's the Good Shepherd. So wherever you go, He's taking care of you. I can't you know, overwatch you 24-7, but the Lord can. So if you try to do something against me, yet I am all love for you, go for it. I'm not concerned. The Lord will teach you. He cannot. <laughs> so therefore, I'm not going to come and stay to my flock, which the Lord gave to me. Hey, this is your church. Be fanatic about it. Don't go and mix with no one. Don't go to that church over there. No, 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 no. That's a no zone. Oh, relax, man. Relax. You're Assyrian. You stick to your Assyrian people. Man. You're, you're, you're Asian. You stick to your Asian people. You're Lebanese. You stick to your... No, you're Italian. No, relax. This is the Lord's. Everything is His. Everything is His. It's Him who, be, who He brings people to the church. Not me. It's the Lord. So when you come... It's the Lord's doings, not, my, not mine. So all I do is I serve the people the Lord sends my way. I salute you. I bow and kiss your feet. And I say, welcome to your home, to your daddy's home. I'm just your servant here. You're the owners. I'm your servant. That's all it is. When somebody puts on this uniform, becomes a servant. The children are the owners, the heirs, the inheritors of their father's possession. So you are the rightful owners of the church. I am your servant as a bishop. I'm not the owner. So what am I afraid of? I want to lose nothing. At the end, I'm going to my, my sweetheart Jesus. That's it. Job is done. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I love you, man. The most handsome Jewish guy I ever came across. I never knew Jewish men are this handsome. Jesus surpasses all beauty. So to all my beloved Jewish men, you should be proud that you have Jesus as the man, baby. <laughs> Too good looking for a Jew. <laughs> or I should say, too good looking for a Middle Eastern in general anyway. But he's too good looking for all humanity. He is the most handsome, breathtaking, perfect man, perfect God you could ever come across. Six foot one, brownish, crispy hair, split in the middle all the way to the shoulders. His beard is not long. It is also brownish, dark brown beard, very, very, not very long, beautiful, very beautiful. Greenish eyes, tan skin, Middle Eastern, Mediterranean. He is not blonde, he is not white, he is not Asian. He is Jewish, Middle Eastern. All right, so tan skin, six foot one. After 2023 years, he is still 33 years of age and kicking baby. And he's still available looking for someone to say, Yes, I want to befriend you. The Lord is still looking. He says, I'm looking for my bride. I found my bride, but I'm looking for more. I want my bride to be more beautiful and more beautiful. I'm still looking for someone to come and enter with me in an intimate relationship based on divine love and divine holiness and purity. Holiness and purity. He is your holy companion. Your holy companion. Blessed are the peacemakers.
for they shall be called the sons of God. The moment you start making peace in the world, that will be our next subject. The enemy will come after you. The moment you start making peace, the first people that will go against you, your family, members, the closest people to you will be your enemy. That is a given. Don't even blink your eyes. Don't even think twice about it. It will happen. It will happen. And there is no escape. The day you surrender to the Lord Jesus and the day you start working for the Lord and the day you start making peace in the world, the first people that will disown you are your own family. Period. Take him and throw him out. You are deposed from the church, disowned. But this time, it's been a long journey. This person is no longer that young, fresh, David, mommy's boy, or Jacob, mommy's boy. Now he is an adult. He's been now barbecued by the Lord Jesus. He's been trained by the Lord Jesus. Now his skin is no longer soft, tender, putting an, an Nivea cream. Oh, because I've got cracks. Oh, I'm, I feel sorry for... No, the skin is dead. It's solid. There is layers upon layers of dead, solid skin. You can pierce it and nothing will happen. It's like a rock because the Lord barbecued me. He chopped me like that palm tree. Now I'm no longer that soft baby, mommy's boy. I am daddy's son. So you are deposed from the church. I say, hallelujah. Before I cried when somebody told me off, I went home and I cried so weak. Cried for myself. Now they tell me off, I say, not even an orchestra plays uh, so beautifully like this guy. Look at the words that are coming out of your mouth, brother. Wow. Like this guy was saying to me, I know who you are. You are the devil. I said, man, well, thank you, my dear friend. <laughs> but you, you forgot something. I don't think the devil is as good looking as me. Eh? I know who you are. You are the devil. I said, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, since you called me the devil, I'll be coming at night time in your dream. <laughs> and I will go to you. Boo. <laughs> and I will be your worst nightmare. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. How the Lord builds you up. Amazing. 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 Nothing matters anymore. Your own people disown you. Thank God. They come back and embrace you again. Thank God. It's all good. And no hard feelings. The Lord will show you that I've taught you now because you will know he'll make sure you know this those who have stabbed you in the in the heart in the back those who have dug a big ditch to make you fall when you see them next you won't even mention nothing except hello how are you I love you brother and you hug them and you kiss them as if that nothing has happened because truly nothing has happened in fact, I thank you for being a pain. I thank you for throwing me out. I thank you for going against me. I thank you for stabbing me. I thank you for hurting me. You've done me the biggest favor ever. Now I'm a grown-up adult. I'm no longer that weak baby. So Bishop, we're going to give you this archdiocese. You'll have thousands of people under your jurisdiction. What? Doesn't matter. I don't see people anymore. With all love and respect, I'm saying this. 
But I'm seeing Christ now in everyone. You see, if I see you, it's a problem. Then I'm going to try to win you over to me, not to Christ. But when I see Christ in every one of you, no, now I am a shepherd leading you to green pastures and still waters. I'm taking you to the Lord because I do you no favor. It is the Lord who delivers. It is the Lord who changes. It is the Lord who saves. It is the Lord who cleanses. It is the Lord who purifies. It is the Lord who redeems. I am just a vessel and a useless one. Useless. So when you come, I see the Lord. That's why I have to bow. Mother Teresa in the streets of Calcutta, looking after this leper, which you can, it can be contagious. This journalist came and he said, Mother, why are you cleaning, changing, feeding this leper? She said, Son, if I ask you this, I'll give you a million dollars and ask you to look after this leper for an hour, you will not do it. Yet us, we do this every single year and for years we've been doing it for free voluntarily. And you still don't know why we're doing it. He said, no mother, that's why I'm asking. She said, son, haven't you heard what the Lord Jesus said? I was sick and you came to me. I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I am serving my Lord Jesus, not this leper. In this leper, my Christ dwells. Isn't he created in the image and the likeness of God? My God is the Lord Jesus. Isn't my Lord Jesus worthy of my service for what he has done for me on Calvary? No matter how much I serve him, I am indebted to him forever. I'm serving my Lord. That's why I do it with a big smile voluntarily, because this is my Jesus not this Indian leper. And the Indians looked at this woman and they said, God has come down in the midst of us. Us Indians don't show mercy on our own people, yet this stranger, this woman, stranger, showing mercy on an Indian guy, they followed the Messiah for what she did. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the sons of God. And to make peace is not easy. You are creating something that doesn't exist from scratch. It is so easy to divide between people, yet so hard to reunite two divided hearts. It took 20 years to build the Twin Towers. It took one hour to bring it down. 20 years to build, one hour to bring down. It's so easy to destroy, yet so extremely hard to build. That's why my beloveds, as parents, it's not easy to be a parent who told you that if you say one word to your child, they will automatically listen to you. No, they won't. You need to make the peace. So you will need to repeat yourself a million zillion times until maybe one day they'll pick it up and say, okay, dad, okay, mom, I'll do it this time, but don't ask it again. <laughs> but to go out in the streets with their friends, oh, not even one second. What are you doing? Come on, man. Are you ready? I'm knocking at your door. What do you mean you're ready? Even Superman doesn't go that fast. But to take my son and daughter to the church, oh my goodness. Every time there is a war and a battle at home, to take the children to church. But so easy for them to sleep over at their friend's house. Mom, I'm going to stay at Natasha's house tonight, okay? My daughter, you have a bed, and your bed is absolutely beautiful, and your room is beautiful. Why don't you sleep in your own bed? No, mom, enough talking. I'm sleeping at Natasha's house, okay? I'm not asking you, I'm just telling you. <laughs> Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. When you make peace, you're imitating the Lord Jesus. 
When you make peace, you're imitating the Lord Jesus. When you see people not talking to each other, go and try and bring them together. Be a peacemaker. Don't be a divider. Be a unifier. Don't divide. You're not unite. Amen? Amen? But to be a peacemaker, it took seven lessons. First, I had to be poor, empty, allowing the Lord to fill me up. Second, I had to cry for all my sins in order to be comforted. Third, I had to entrust Him with everything to be meek. And then fourth, I had to be hungry and thirsty for everything that makes the Lord happy. And then I was merciful. I forgave everyone who has hurt me. It's not easy to be a peacemaker. It's not easy. You may say, why is this person talking and everything is changing? Yet I've been saying it all my life and nothing changed. This guy came, one word and everything changed. No, because you haven't lived what this man lived. You need to go through the lessons. You need to go through the lessons. When you're able to forgive those who have really hurt you, then the Lord will put a pure heart in you. Then you'll start seeing how God functions, how God operates. Because with a pure heart, you will see God. And what is the pure heart? Holiness. Holiness. There are four steps, I'll leave, it, I'll leave you with this. There are four steps to perfection. Well, the fourth step, the fourth one is perfection. The Lord Jesus says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. So it requires, it requires perfection to enter God's kingdom. The very first step is repentance. The second step, righteousness. The third step, holiness. The fourth step and the final one, perfection. The first step, repentance. Each step requires perfection in it in order to be taken to the next step. Until I reach perfection in the step number one, I won't be taken to step number two. So in repentance, I need to perfect myself in repentance. When will I be perfect in repentance? The day that comes, I begin hating sin. I have completed the perfect level in repentance. I not only avoid sin, but I hate it now. I face sin and I laugh at it. I hate it. I can't stand it. Not struggle, not I become weak and try to run, run, run so I don't fall into it. No, no, I face it like a lion and I look at it and I hate it with a passion. Now you are perfect in that repentant level. The Lord will take you to righteousness. Righteousness is doing all the good deeds God approves of. And the perfection in righteousness, you become like Christ. <laughs> then He'll take you to holiness. And you need to be perfect in holiness in order to go to perfection and be perfect as God. Good luck. When are you going to achieve that? We haven't moved from level one. We're still in level one stuck. I sin, I repent, and I sin. I repent, and I sin. I repent, and I sin. When am I going to perfect myself in, in repentance? So the next time I say, I'm a saint, I am a, I'm a faithful person, relax. <laughs> you haven't passed repentance stage. What, per, what, what perfect? What faithful? Humility. Huh? Be humble. Be humble. So to get to making peace, oh, you need to learn. And not only learn, you need to live all these levels. You need to live being poor in spirit. You need to live mourning for your sins. You need to live to be meek. You need to live to be hungry and thirsty for righteousness. You need to live to be merciful. You need to live to be pure in heart. You need to live all these stages in order to make peace. So for the Lord Jesus to make peace on earth, He lived all of these stages. 
He lived them all. And he perfected them all. Now one day he was effective in what he did and what he said. Effective. Why? Because when he spoke, God spoke. He was this perfect. Everything belonged to God. When he spoke, all of God spoke. And the moment he started making peace, they crucified him. <laughs> his own people, huh? His own Jewish people. Disowned him. And they said, crucify him, crucify him. We want Caesar. Caesar is our king. What a bunch of liars. Caesar enslaved you 400 years or 200 years. Caesar enslaved you. Jesus came to set you free. And you, you wanted Caesar, the king over the king of kings? Because he was the peacemaker. His own people became his enemy. But at the end, his own people will bow before him and beg him for mercy in the second coming. Then they will find peace. But until then, there is no peace. You can bombard towns, cities, flatten them to the ground. What have you achieved? You have achieved more enemies. People are hating you more and more now. This is what you're achieving. You've done no one a favor. But when you embrace the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus will make sure everybody loves you. You cannot win people with power. You can win people with love. Not with force, with love. Remember this. You want people to bow before you, love them. You want people to respect you, love them. You want people to listen to you, love them. Don't use force. Force gets you nowhere. You will lose them, and at the end you will lose yourself. Love never fails. Amen? Amen. God bless you, my beloveds. Um, Eddie and Michelle, can we hear another hymn? I uh, spoke too much. Amen. Um, just a couple of announcements and then um, let you go and peace to your homes. We um, recently put a sh very short video about this sponsorship of a child or a family overseas. And again, all these um, beautiful people out there took it and used it to their own advantage and created fake accounts hoping to gain some money from vulnerable people out there. Uh, we've come to find out a few fake accounts. It's all under Marmari or Bishop Marmari or mar.mari.emmanuel. There's another one called Christ uh, King 7. Again, if you ever see anything that is under my name please it's fake if you see anything under my name there is one called marmari dot the samaritan or the good samaritan aid society which this uh, a charity we've established so they put it under the samaritan marmari the samaritan all of these are fake the only the only genuine only genuine site where we are seeking donations for the sponsorship of a child or a family is under the Good Samaritan Aid Society, which is www.jesus, G for George, S for Sam, A for Alpha, S for Sam, jesus.org.au. This is the only site you should donate to, jesus.org.au. Anything outside of that, it's fake. Do not fall into this trap. So, um, unfortunately, some people are uh, gathering momentum and there's a lot of people joining their page thinking it's me. It's not me. If I ask, I will ask for a million and above. <laughs> uh, 
You either go big or you go home. So please, anything that is under my personal name, it's all fake. It's only place it is the Good Samaritan Aid Society, which is jesus.org.au for the sponsorship. Please, I beg you, do not fall into this trap. And if you come across these fake accounts that are made under my name or any other name outside of jesus.org.au, ignore it or report it. Report it, please, and inform other people not to fall into this trap. But we thank the Lord. The sponsorship is really increasing. Um, the number of people from all over the world are increasing by the day. Um, we thank the Lord for that. So we can help more and more and more people. Divine Heart Sunday School, parents with children in the Divine Heart Sunday School tomorrow, Saturday at 6 p.m. is the Holy Mass service dedicated for the children of the Sunday School and the parents. Please, parents, mom and dad, do come tomorrow with your children uh, at 6 p.m. for the Holy Mass service um, for our beloved Divine Heart Sunday School. This Sunday, the 12th of November, after the morning service, which finishes around 11.30, between 11.30 and 12 midday, we will be having a baptismal service, baptizing eight adults and three um, children, maybe between ages of five and seven, something like that. So there's eight adults from different walks of life coming to receive the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior. So it is this Sunday around lunchtime. So please, if you can make it, do come and uh, join us in this very joyous and happy occasion where heaven is rejoicing for one person is coming back and receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Our Heavenly Father is very happy. So let us share and join in His happiness this Sunday around lunchtime. This is for the youth ministry, which we had established in recent times. This is for the ages of 18 plus. Youth ministry will be held on Saturday, the 25th of November at 12 noon here at the church. It's Saturday, the 25th at 12 noon is the monthly meeting for our youth ministry. Carols by candlelight will be held on Saturday, the 9th of December. Saturday, the 9th of December. It will uh, start at 4 p.m. with families and kids. We're going to have um, jumping castles, uh, face painting, and the likes for our beautiful children. Uh, so we'll start at 4, and then at 6.30 p.m. sharp, the, um, uh, our beautiful choirs will be singing the carols, um, songs, and hymns. That will start at 6.30. But it will commence for families with children from 4 p.m. It is from 4 p.m. And the, the carols will be, uh, will be sang in three languages, um, English, Arabic, and Assyrian. That will be on Saturday, the 9th of December. And that's it from me. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you. Let's stand for the finale prayer, please. One very last thing. The moment we finish, I'm going to ask you, um, I'm, I'm really sorry I won't be able to stay back. Um, I'm extremely, 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 extremely exhausted. I'm barely standing on my feet as I'm speaking to you all this an hour and 40 minutes maybe. So please do forgive me this time and pray for me. I won't be able to. I'm just um, very, very tired. So the moment we finish, please do forgive me. I'll have to leave immediately. I'm, otherwise, I'm going to collapse. I love you. So pray for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace.
The peace of Christ be with you always, my beloved.